auditorium uh -huh. and a dollar and twenty cents on the microphone. Yeah, really. <laughs> Almost at this time. Let's see, where can we do this where it'll work? Okay. We're going. It's all right. I think you're the only person I've ever interviewed that had their own watch with their face on it. Well, I'll tell you how that happened. My wife, who was sitting right across the way from me here, had that made. You know the, you see the face on there? Yeah. Have you ever heard of Hirschfield? Yeah. He did all the marvelous caricatures. He did that of me. And my wife had the watch made for me. And this way, I can always remember who I am by seeing my name there. If somebody says, who are you? I don't have to say, wait a minute. Oh, yeah. That's very important. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm doing a series on, on comedians and comedy. Uh, it's, a t it's always tough to talk about comedy because I think there's nothing more boring in the world, really, than talking about comedy. But what makes... Uh, I think the big problem is trying to dissect it. Yeah. Like it's either funny or it isn't funny. You know, and, and people say, oh, I can't stand slapstick. Some guy will go by and slip on a banana peel and they'll get hysterical. So people don't believe what they say. And people like to put down that kind of comedy, but I see people, they love pie in the face Listen. and slip down and a man wearing a woman's dress and that kind of thing. But they love that. Can I tell you something? I lecture on comedy at UCLA, at comedy writing. And I must tell you that some of the kids get great ideas, but they need guidance. We got a lot of young, very talented young kids who are coming along, but they do need guidance. For instance, they'd come to me and they'd have five jokes on a page, and they think they had five different jokes, but because they changed the name of the locale, they thought it was the same darn joke, all five of them. We're just straightening them out, it's all that will happen. Another thing that I object to heartily is, is the use of dirty words. I just, just but not my, my bowl of wax. What about Eddie Murphy then? He's obviously a funny man, but he, th he thinks he has to say nasty words in order to be funny. That's sad. I think he thinks he knows that he doesn't have to. He just, <laughs> like some of these kids, I say, why do you put down dirty words? It has shock value. I said, you're crazy. Shock value died with Lenny Bruce years ago. You don't have to tell these people what these dirty words mean. They've all been there before. If you're doing a dock worker or some bum, and he says it, that's permissible in a, in a show. But for no reason at all, I say to these kids, you want to learn comedy? Look at guys like Laurel and Hardy, Larry Seaman, those kind of guys, Patty Arbuckle, they were funny men. And they did never, never been in any window of any kind. I know when I was a kid starting in Vaudeville, in every dressing room they had a big sign on the side. It said, anyone using the word hell or damn will be canceled immediately. And they were. And I can do with nothing worse than that. So it, I just don't understand it. Right? What makes you laugh? Do you know? Anything that's funny. Like somebody asked me today, he says, who's your favorite comedian? I said, God, you don't believe me? Look around. People are always doing funny things. It's just being an observer on the current scene that comes. I'm allergic to ugly people myself, and I, I got a lot of laugh out of ugly people, because I'm one of the ugly people, and I like to watch ugly people. Well, sometimes I said that once about an ugly person. My wife said, she can't help it if she's ugly. I said, she could stay home. <laughs> All right, let me get a picture over here with him, and we'll be chatting so we can... Oh, you've got your own 8 millimeter camera here? That's a, it seems mine's, mine's a little bit bigger than that one. I've got two or three. I've been using them since they first came out for the amateur years. You still uh, amazed that Dick Van Dyke still on the air every day? I'm still amazed at the telephone. <laughs> you know what we made? People say to me, you do have an idea like this with a main of perennial so on. I've seen myself in seven different languages in different countries. And people laugh in the same places, in the right places, they react in the right places. So we must have been doing something right. However, we never, none of us ever realized the show would go on and on and on. Do you realize it's been 25 years since we've done that show? Uh, I, was, uh, I was much smaller than I am now. Me too. And it's a role model though for good, clean, funny comedy. Just from some classic comedy. comedy, that's right. Very little of it running around now. Carl Reiner, he's still funny. I was with him not long ago. I, he still makes me laugh. Carl Reiner is a brilliant man. Fine writer, he has a great comedy sense, and I admire him very much. As a matter of fact, at the end of the series, I wrote a letter to Carl Reiner and to Sheldon Leonard, who was our producer on the show, thanking them both for an education. Very, very right men in that. You gave us a lot of laughs, Maury. I love Thank it. You. Still do. Be well. Thank you.
Okay. How far, how close do we need to work this mic on this, on him? Is this good enough? That you need to know it's Okay. What brings you to the land of Mickey Mouse? Well, we're here for the 20th anniversary of Disney World. I mean, uh, why, is, why is everybody here? I'm just having a ball. It's great, sir. How are you doing? Do you ride the rides and do that stuff? Or I love this stuff. Well, you know, Southern Ashley, tomorrow night, we have our Body by Jake auditions for the girls on our television show. And if you remember, back in 88, I think it was, we had you down on the ground doing some yep. uh, sit-ups. Right. So maybe you come down tomorrow, see, see my uh, better hands. <laughs> I don't know if I can take it. I mean, the international Vanna Whites are here. This is all too much. All right, a couple of things for some series we're doing. Uh, what kind of movies do you watch? I mean, if you had to go out and rent some movies tonight, what do you like? I love comedies. I love comedy adventure type pictures. Uh, I'm not much for the Rambo type things, the Terminator stuff I kind of like, but I love more family entertainment. I really like that. You know, the stuff that's out now, the What About Bobs and things like that, I really enjoy. Comedies. What makes you laugh then? What, what makes me silly things? The, the, the silliest stuff you can think of. I love the, the, all the slapstick humor. That kind of stuff just cracks me up all the time, no matter what they do. You know, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I love that. Right. Let me stand up and get a two shot. I'll do something right quick. All right, we're here with Jake today, Body by Jake. You see him on television for our home video preview. Now, we're going to go out and rent some movies, okay? All right. I'm going to rent one first. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. And uh, you get to see him in kind of a compromising position. Into oh, the phone. night. Do you remember that? <laughs> yes, I Let's do. Let's talk about this. It's almost uh -oh. a nude scene, Jake. Yeah, well, it was actually one of my first films I ever did, and it was with a very good friend of mine, John Landis. And it first starred Michelle Pfeiffer. That was her first starring film. Uh, and I had a great time. And... Uh, it's a fun it's movie. It's a lot of fun. It's, it's, it's a real cult movie. I mean, a lot of people have uh, rented the movie. And yes, I am in my underwear. Can you recommend this? Let's watch Into the Night. Here's a scene. Into the Night. All right, we're back. We didn't get to see Jake's scene there. We had to watch Michelle Pfeiffer, but that's oh, okay. Oh, Chip. I had to do it. All right, it was okay. A family show. And she's, a, and, uh, she's also a lot cuter than I All right, let's say we rent something like Silence of the Lambs, right? Is that your thing or not really? Um, Silence of the Lambs I really enjoyed. I wouldn't kind of watch it if I was babysitting or something like that. You know, <laughs> something that I wouldn't want to do. Yeah, it's something that's not a children's movie. Yeah, to say no, the least, I, I wouldn't even though it has kind of a nice name. Home. Yeah, Silence yeah. of the Lambs, it ain't. All right, now we're watching this. All right. Two pretty good movies today, and of course you can always rent Body by Jake. I'm sure that's in the instructional section, isn't it? Yes, it is, most definitely. Uh, Do people rent your things or mostly buy them? Hopefully they buy them and they don't copy them. Now, no one copies a tape out there. I mean, I hope you're not renting them and copying them off and then bringing it back. Good, Ooh. good, We are taking good, names good. of those people. They do take uh, the names of those people. Out. Okay, good, good deal. No, and, and everyone's shaking their head no, so I appreciate it. Thank good. you. Okay. Well, I'm going to go out and do some bodybuilding things with Jake. I don't really need it, but uh, I want to do it mainly for him. Up, all pumped yes. up and nowhere to go. I let the air out, actually, before <laughs> I came down. Good seeing you, man.